This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Ho there, it's Jeff Cutter Dobby welcoming you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, June the 15th, 1977, the New York Mets become stupefied by trading not just Tom Seaver, but Dave Kingman as well. The Mets were not doing so hot in the 1977 season. Fair to say after the 73 World Series attempt, they were sliding off the map in such a way. But the Mets have made Mets made a couple of dumb moves. I'll talk about the Tom Seaver trade. Obviously, when I talk about Tom Seaver being so good. But anyway. The Mets traded Dave Keeman, who is the Bean Hill Run Man. Uh, to trade him to San Diego. I thought it was like, I didn't know. For Bobby Valentine and Paul Siebert. Basically, Bobby Valentine, the trade for pa Bobby Valentine was huge because he used to be a good, decent manager. He was a star manager in Japan. And heck, he was manager for the Mets in the heyday in the late 90s, early 2000s when they actually were decent. So, anyway, yeah, trade Dave King is bad enough. I mean, like, the guy is a home run hitting icon. I know he struck out a lot and all that. And believe me, there, we have a lot of home run hitters that strike out a lot. Anyway, sink or swim. So anyway, let's talk about Tom Seaver. Tom Seaver made the Mets roster in 1967 and actually pitched in the 1967 All-Star game, which was weird. But he was 16-13 and 13 in his rookie season with the last place Mets with 18 complete games, 170 strikeouts, and a good ERA. He was rookie of the year, obviously. Saber would basically help the Mets do decently in 68, getting out of the basement. But in 1969, he just shocked everyone by winning 25 games, most in the National League. He won the Cy Young Award. He had a runner-up in the MVP voting to Willie McCovey. But the big thing was the Mets, who were always second division teams, the second division franchise, actually made it to the top three spots in the National League. Not only that, they won. Well, then again, I mean, they were the best team in the NL East. Because in 69, with the arrival of San Diego, Montreal, Kansas City, and the Seattle Pilots, they decided to expand to two divisions, uh, well, with the 12 teams in each uh, league, if you will. So basically, six in the NL East and then six in the NL West. The winner of those ones would play a best of five matchup to see who goes to the World Series. So anyway, so you ever help the Mets Coming back from early devastating against the Chicago Cubs to win the NL East. In fact, against the Cubs, Seaver threw eight and a third perfect innings against the Cubs. Jim Qualls would break up Seaver's pit for a bit of a perfect game when he hit a single. In the NLCS, Seaver pitched game one against Phil Necro and beat him nine to five. The Mets swept the Braves in that NLCS. And then in the World Series, he pitched game one but lost to Mark, Mike Cuellar in the Orioles four to one. But then Seaver pitched game four, and he pitched the whole ten innings in that 2-1 win, which was a little controversial because of the ball hitting J.C. Martin's wrist and ricocheting for the wing run, even though J.C. Martin was inside the baseline, and that would have been legal. However, Seaver was named Sports Illustrated's Sportsman of the Year. Seaver would actually, in April 1970, strike out the final ten batters of the game against the Padres. And it was amazing all that. Steve Carlton had 19 strikeouts in a nine inning game, which tied uh, Tom Seaver's mark. But because the Mets actually got a pair of two of them on home runs, that was huge. So basically, Seaver looked good. He was 17 and 6, but somehow, in some way, he faltered and he dropped to 18 and 12. He still led in ERA and strikeouts. 1971, he led the NL in earned run average and strikeouts and won 20 games. But somehow, he ended up second in Cy Young to Fergie James, who had better control numbers. Seaver did well in the, 19, in the 70s, getting four 21 seasons and all that. It was amazing, all that. Seaver basically was the guy who could have helped the Mets win the World Series in 73. They were out three games to two, head back to Oakland, but unfortunately Seaver didn't have his arm. 
But then the Mets had troubles because by 1977, free agency would put a wedge between teams and players. And, it, you know, they were surf clause. So he wanted to negotiate his contract so that he could bring his salary in, top of, in line with other top pitchers. But the chairman of the board said that basically didn't want to budge. And it didn't help matters that New York columnist Dick Young wrote negative columns on Seaver's demands. Seaver wanted to resolve this impasse. But of course, Young wrote a story that said that Seaver was goaded by his wife to ask for more money because she was envious of Nolan Ryan. When Seaver heard this story, he said that he wanted out and he wanted to be traded because of Grant. So basically, Seaver was traded at the trade. Oh, I guess the trading deadline was June 15. Anyway, the trading deadline to the Reds for Pat Zachary, Steve Henderson, Doug Flynn, and Dan Norman. They all were not really that good and all that. Pat Zachary was just off helping the Reds win back to back World Series. So basically, Grant had troubles, and Dick Young, I bet you he got a lot of backlash and all that. But I wonder how, if he got punished. It was basically, you know, Dick Young sided with owners more than players and all that. So, yeah. Yeah, Seaver was not happy with Dick Young's stuff and all that. And so anyway, when he went to the Reds, he would. It was fantastic. He was fourteen and three with the Reds and won twenty-one games overall in nineteen seventy-seven. Seaver struck out eleven batters in his return to Shea Stadium, and he got a lengthy ovation. Basically, the Mets just screwed up. The Mets would finish terrible, and in fact, the Attendance was so bad, it was down to 9,700 a game, which is amazing. Basically, uh, Donald Grant was fired for his stuff and all that. Seaver did pitch a no-hitter for the Reds against the Cardinals in 1978. Almost a year exactly after he got traded from the Mets. He was he did pretty good for himself. In 1981, he was 14-2. But, didn't, but the Reds didn't make the playoffs because of the stupid split season thing. Seaver was then traded back in 1982 by the Reds to the Mets for a few faces. He was 9 and 14. He didn't do that well. And then basically the Mets put him in the free agent compensation draft. Well, the Mets thought that no one would pursue a high salary 39 year old starting pitcher. Left him off the protection list. But the compensation draft had the white, but the White Sox said, we'll do it. In fact, Seaver got his 300 to win in White Sox outfits. And then he was pitching Boston. And then he went to Boston. As the White Sox traded Seaver to Boston in the 86 season for Steve Lyons. Seaver had a knee injury and all that. He was 5-7 and seven with the Red Sox. And the funny thing is, Tom Seaver almost, almost pitched in the 86 World Series against the Mets. Would that have been crazy? But he had an injury and he was out for the full season. So basically, at least the Mets fans didn't have to deal with that issue. But anyway, yeah, the Mets really screwed up. And Dick Young deserves to go to hell. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.